Cooksier is arguably the greatest Rocket League player of all time. He's also one of the more unique players, having a very original and sometimes downright confusing playstyle. Sometimes it looks like he's not even playing the same game as everyone else. I wanted to look at Cooksier's overall playstyle and see if there are some things that we can learn from him. I hope you guys find this video helpful, I know I learned a lot making it. Let's start by talking about camera settings. Cooksier likes to change his camera settings a lot, and there's a reason for that. He seems to be searching for the perfect camera settings. He explains his rationale for having such odd camera settings in his Reddit post that I've linked in the description. In it, he talks about how your camera is related to the ball when your car's momentum changes, and he explains why 50-50s are easier in car cam, and why it sometimes feels like your car actually goes through the ball. His camera settings are really an attempt at fixing this problem by trying to get the same camera setup as the old game. I've tried his camera settings a couple of times and hated them, but let's just go ahead and give it another try. So is it weird that I named myself Cooksier Jr.? That's not weird, right? I think that out of all the pros camera settings, this would probably be the hardest to get used to. It just feels like a lot is being sacrificed to just get better 50-50s. But honestly, what do I know? Cooksier is not unique in preferring to use flatter cars. The way in which he uses them has made a few of the cars become somewhat iconic. His opinion is that the taller cars may give you an advantage on the ground, but that they keep you from being able to be creative in the air, which for him is more important. I make a pretty similar argument in my video on which car is best for you, so just go check that video out if you're more interested on whether you should use a taller car or a flatter car. Now switching to the Batmobile isn't going to make you play like Cooks here, but I will say that the flatter cars are definitely worth trying, especially if you're playing more 2v2 or 3v3. I want to look at how Cooksier plays 1v1, not only because he's one of the best ones players in the world, but also because he has a really unique playstyle. At the heart of Cooksier's 1v1 strategy is his defense. He likes to let players come to him, and he scores most of his goals on counterattacks. He's able to do this because he plays with incredible patience and his reaction time is amazing. Like most high level 1s players, Cooksier likes to shadow his opponent on defense, but unless the person dribbling can easily be tackled, he almost always waits for his opponent to take a shot. This defensive strategy honestly works against like 99% of players. Unless your opponent can throw the ball incredibly fast at the top corners, you should be able to wait and make the save, as long as you've positioned yourself correctly. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make a video on defensive positioning and shadowing. It's a really helpful skill to have. On offense, Cooksier isn't the best at flicks or power shots. He doesn't try to play incredibly fast or do lots of boost starving. He's obviously still good in these areas, but this isn't really where he focuses on offense. He just plays super patient. That's the simplest way to describe it. It's something many of us suck at. He rarely challenges if he doesn't know that he will win, and he just waits for his opponent to make a mistake, and then he capitalizes. It's pretty boring, really. Cooksier actually does have some preferred moves on offense. He likes to air dribble from the ground and do a lot of fake air dribbles also. He also likes to just wait behind the ball and then hit it around you when you attack. I'm sure this is incredibly annoying, but I've never had to play Cooksier, so. I have a feeling this could be really effective against people who aren't as good at defending as people like Scrub Killer. Again, this is one of those moves that takes incredible patience and awareness. You have to learn how to not watch the ball 24-7 and really keep an eye on your opponent while you're playing. In my video on Kronovi, I talked about boost management and how almost anything can be done with about 30 to 40 boost. In terms of boost management, Cooksier actually plays a lot like Kronovi. He doesn't make his playstyle dependent on having lots of boost, he just picks up a bunch of pads and manages to score lots of long goals while his opponent is overextending. I'm not saying that this is how you should play ones, it's certainly not how I play, but I definitely think there are some things that we can learn from his strategy. Now I want to talk about Cooksier's overall playstyle and some of the things that make him such an incredible player. I was able to download a bunch of his games from the website RocketLeagueReplays.com. You guys should really go check that out if you get a chance. I did this so that I could watch entire games from his perspective. It was really interesting. Like, I felt like I was in the mind of Cooksier himself. 
In terms of mechanics, Cooksier's greatest strength is his aerial game. His ability to place shots where he wants is second to none. I've put a really good playlist by Pukito in the description below that's for aerial training. This training pack has both simple and actually really difficult aerial shots, and it's a great way to practice your shot placement. Work on air rolling your car in different ways to get better placement and power. I talked earlier about Cooksear's defensive strategy for 1v1. In 3's and 2's, defense obviously isn't the same, though there are definitely times when you have to shadow your opponent. One of the things Cooksear does to alleviate pressure from the offense is make small passes on defense. This is another one of those skills that takes a lot of control and patience. Far too often, players have an uncontested hit and instead of thinking about where they're clearing the ball, they just boom it down the field to their opponent. Sometimes this is your only option, but if you can learn how to be a bit more intentional on defense, you'll be able to transition back onto offense easier. One of the things that we can all learn from Cooksear is his ability to position himself where he needs to be within the rotation. This is something that a lot of us struggle with. We don't know where we're supposed to be on the field and what position we're supposed to be in, and so we find ourselves second guessing instead of making decisions quickly. We need to either aggress or go back, but we find ourselves just kind of not knowing where we are, what we're supposed to be doing. Higher level players like Cooks here know their position within the rotation, and they play that position the way it's meant to be played. Cooksear's positioning is especially noticeable when he's on offense, because that's where he really excels. When Cooksear has his team behind him on defense, his ability to create plays is amazing. He doesn't feel the need to play cautious when aggressing, because he trusts his teammates. This makes it so that he can react to a potential shot incredibly fast. The last thing I want to touch on is Cooksear's overall outlook on the game as a player and as a competitor. In his interview with Johnny Boy for Bad Panda, he talks about Flipside's history and how adaptive they've had to be as a team. They weren't always head and shoulders above their competitors, and they definitely aren't now. Rather, what they did was force themselves to step their game up as new teams were changing the way the game was played, and sort of be their rival and they would have to step their game up to be able to compete with them. This meant that they had to put in the time necessary to improve, and it really paid off. If you're like me, professional esports probably isn't anywhere in your near future. But the fun part about this game is trying to reach your own personal goals. Maybe you just want to get out of the rank you're in, or make it past the first round of RLCS. Whatever it is, the only way you will improve is if you learn to adapt. What are the higher ranked players doing that you're not doing? Get over this notion that you're amazing and your losses are just because of your teammates. You need to start saving your replays when you lose and watch them from the other team's perspective. Figure out where you need to improve and then go work on it. That's how Cooksear was able to get to where he is, and that's really the only way you're going to get better too. Alright, I hope you guys found this helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Until next time, peace out.